Hi, I'm Brian Avery. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat. Um, I've been working on Istio for the last three years now, and I'm a co-lead of the test and release work group, as well as a co-lead of the product security work group. And I'm Eric Van Norman. I am a senior software engineer at IBM. I have been working on Istio for two years. I am a co-lead of the test and release work group, as well as a maintainer in the documentation work group. Just a quick note that this talk focuses on producing more predictable and stable releases going forward. Uh, please join Brian and I in the Istio Slack to help us understand your concerns and any other feedback related to this talk. One question to start this out, how are you consuming Istio? We recently released Istio 1.9. Um, how soon will you download it and try it in a sandbox or how soon will you um, download it and get it into production? As I mentioned, one of the key things the community wanted to do um, is to work on creating more stable um, releases. And so we solicited feedback across a number of areas. We looked at GitHub issues, discussed at istio.io, Twitter, we had discussions with users and we had an upgrade survey. Some of the common feedback we got from all of these um, sources were users found upgrades very challenging. Um, releases were inconsistent. Um, the release and upgrade notes might not be consistent between releases. Um, the release date might slip from when it was first projected. Uh, you might have known a release that had some known issues, um, which were quickly fixed in a patch release. And maybe there were some performance and resource usage issues when the release first came out. I think the common denominator with that was the Istio community didn't seem to have a process for their release. So this led to the Istio community coming up with a couple of things that we're gonna talk about during this talk. So the first is the upgrade working group, um, also release note generation and the definition of done. So I wanna talk a little bit about the upgrade working group. Its mission was to improve the stability, user experience and test infrastructure around Istio upgrades. Um, so the survey looked at a number of things. Um, it looked at what users were installing and upgrading from and what they used um, whether it be Istio Control, um, Helm, it was in place, was revision based. And basically the working group wanted to come up with a stand, some standards and processes based on the um, user expectations for the upgrade, whether it had, had to do with the control plane behavior or data plane communication. Uh, we also want to promote um, revision based upgrades to become a stable feature and support um, and also make it the preferred method for upgrades going forward. Uh, one of the things we want to add is the idea of skip level revision based upgrades. So if you're doing a revision upgrade, um, you don't have to necessarily follow the recommend the currently recommended 1.7 to 1.8, uh, 1.9, but you could go from 1.7 to 1.9 directly. We also want to make sure that we update the current and create new documentation for all the various upgrade uh, supported methods. Uh, we also want to look at the uh, user experience for upgrades. We want the ability to um, add some pre-checks and some tooling to help identify and warn about known potential issues and to provide the user a clear path forward um, in those cases. An example might be a, a feature that was deprecated. What does the user need to do to um, move forward from the deprecation? And lastly, we want to talk a little bit about uh, adding some more tests for um, upgrades. One of the first things we did last year was we started to improve the testing infrastructure. So we are now able to stand up control plane, data plane, um, and then upgrade them all while communication is going on um, to help test the upgrade process. Um, and now we need to do um, extend the current testing and or create new tests um, to make sure we're testing upgrades across all the supported methods. Um, besides just using the default configuration, we want to make sure that we can upgrade across um, customized configuration. So things like um, usage of auto MTLS, uh, maybe gateways, maybe mixed level control planes. Um, and since there's a whole lot of um, variables there, we need to also work with users to make sure that we are testing the, the common configurations moving forward. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Brian. Okay, so um, part of uh, what we've worked on is the definition of done. Um, this is kind of a standardization of process of what we expect for features of various levels and uh, releases of various types um, with the end goal of making Istio releases and feature quality consistent and predictable. 
Uh, our approach for the definition of done was to uh, come up with a list of requirements and automate them where possible uh, for everything else, make the information easy to consume through checklists and continuous feedback. So far, we've visited release note tooling, feature a feature maturity process, um, as well as release, a release maturity process. Under the old release note system, we had a draft Google document that we would create for a release, and we would expect this to be populated over the release. Uh, what ended up happening is the release would uh, come due and the release managers would go to look at the draft and the draft was often empty, uh, which meant that they had to go through the commits and figure out what changed, what the context was around it, um, whether those changes affected users, uh, try to come up with all of this on the fly, um, usually took week, a week or more to come up with those release notes. Under the new system, the release notes are integrated directly into GitHub, um, where it asks users, um, whether developers, whether their um, pull request has any user facing changes. If it does, the developer can easily add a release note, or if it doesn't, then the developer can check a box and the pull request will merge. Uh, this has resulted in release notes that are thought of upfront as use, as part of um, changes with the context by the people who know the most about what's being changed and whether it affects users. Um, this has resulted in release notes and upgrade notes that are no longer easily forgotten and has shortened the process uh, from weeks to hours for major releases and hours to minutes for patch releases. Um, this has led to better communication of what's important to users and more time saved for developers. Uh, for the feature maturity process, uh, we uh, gathered and we discussed what requirements we think um, are needed for experimental alpha, beta, and stable features. Um, as part of this, we've worked on ensuring appropriate documentation, testing, and code completion um, is done for each level. And we're working on making sure that features continue to mature. So a feature doesn't stay in alpha for its entire life cycle, but progresses over time to beta and then to stable. Uh, for release maturity, um, again, kind of the same thing as um, for features, um, where we have a checklist of expectations that we um, have for releases. As new release managers come in, they can look at this uh, list of requirements and figure out what's needed. Um, it includes things such as where to post announcements, as well as things to watch out for re with releases, whether those be performance regressions, resource usage regressions, um, open issues, features being promoted, release notes, um, upgrade notes, that sort of thing. Um, our end goal here um, is to have a continuous uh, release health dashboard where we can see how a release is progressing. In the beginning of a release, you might not have um, any features completed or um, might be missing documentation, um, other things that get completed as the release goes on. As that release progresses, if you see things that um, aren't being completed that you know take a longer time than you have remaining, then you know that um, that feature might uh, need to be revisited, whether it makes it into the release, needs extra resources, something else to try to catch up that um, release and release on time. Um, this has been a large effort throughout the SEO community. Uh, these are some of the people who uh, have put a large effort into the uh, project. And thank you. Um, please join us and let you know, let us know your thoughts in the test and release um, and upgrade channels on the SDO Slack. And uh, please attend, please come and attend the work group meetings. Um, there's a link to the uh, meeting calendar uh, on this page.